Think of a world something like Jupiter, with an atmosphere rich in hydrogen, helium, methane, water, and ammonia, in which organic molecules might be falling from the skies like manna from heaven. Could there be life on such a world? Well, there's a special problem. The atmosphere is turbulent, and down deep, before we ever come to a surface, it's very hot. If you're not careful, you'll be carried down and fried. So one way to make a living is to reproduce before you're fried. Turbulence will carry some of your offspring to the higher and cooler layers. Such organisms could be very little. We call them sinkers. The physicist E.E. E. Saul Peter and I at Cornell have calculated something about the other kinds of life that might exist on such a world. Vast living balloons could stay buoyant by pumping heavy gases from their interiors or by keeping their insides warm. They might eat the organic molecules in the air or make their own with sunlight. We call these creatures floaters. We imagine floaters kilometers across, enormously larger than the greatest whale that ever was, beings the size of cities. We conceive of them arrayed in great lazy herds as far as the eye can see, concentrated in the updrafts in the enormous sea of clouds. But there can be other creatures in this alien environment, hunters. Hunters are fast and maneuverable. They eat the floaters, both for their organic molecules and for their store of pure hydrogen. But there can't be many hunters, because if they destroy all the floaters, they themselves will perish. Physics and chemistry permit such life forms. Art presents them with a certain reality, but nature is not obliged to follow our speculations. However, if there are billions of inhabited worlds in the Milky Way galaxy, then I think it's likely that there are a few places which might have hunters and floaters and sinkers. Biology is more like history than it is like physics. You have to know the past to understand the present. There's no predictive theory of biology, just as there's no predictive theory of history. The reason is the same. Both subjects are still too complicated for us. But we can understand ourselves much better by understanding other cases. The study of a single instance of extraterrestrial life, no matter how humble a, a microbe would be just fine, will deprovincialize biology. It will show us what else is possible. We've heard so far the voice of life on only a single world. But for the first time, as we shall see, we've begun a serious scientific search for the cosmic fugue.